This is a LED sticker. In this video I'm going to share with you its design process, successes and failures that I have encountered while designing it. So in this video I will test three different sticker case designs to see which one diffuses the light better, test some engineering solutions I have used and compare several light control methods to see which one provides the most beautiful look. So the main idea of the design is to somehow position LEDs at the side of the semi-transparent case, illuminate them with a specific control sequence and eventually apply a sticker with a cool illustration on top. However, there are numerous challenges along the way. The primary challenge was to make it as thin as possible, while ensuring it would work for 4-5 hours without needing a charge. And I must say choosing the battery was quite a headache. I conducted some research and found that there are modern ceramic batteries that are extremely thin. Unfortunately, I couldn't find an option to purchase them online, because only several companies produce them and they are quite expensive. Ultimately, I settled for lithium polymer batteries. They aren't as thin as ceramic ones, but offer high capacity and at least available online for a reasonable price. The next task involved charging this battery. After considering various options, I decided to use a Type-C connector with a small charging IC. After all, what else should I use when even Apple has started using Type-C? Consequently, in this design, the height of the connector became the primary limiting factor. I couldn't make the case thinner than the height of the USB connector, so I based all my calculations on that. Finally, to control everything, I used a simple 8-bit controller, and to encapsulate and protect the electronics inside the case, I designed a third board with cutouts for USB connector and the button. As you can see, all the parts are quite simple, they can be easily manufactured and 3D printed. Alternatively, if you don't have a 3D printer or don't want to deal with the breadboards for electronics, you can outsource machining and PCB production to one of the professional companies like PCBWay, which is a sponsor of this video. They kindly 3D printed and CNC machined these pieces for me and also produced the required PCBs. You can order boards from them in just 5 minutes using the instant quote option, which only cost 1 bucks per PCB. Link for them is in the description. So after getting all components from the PCB way, I immediately started assembling process. Due to size restrictions, I had to place components very close to each other and use a solder pad that is smaller than it should be in theory, which complicates soldering a little bit. Some components, for example, are so small that if they are dropped on the floor, they are just gone. They seem to evaporate before they reach the ground. Even though all pieces fit together perfectly, I made some, what I would call, miscalculations, which made assembly a bit problematic. For example, the board connection by soldering two boards together worked perfectly on one side, but on the other side, due to a thin pads and their proximity, it became a little bit impossible to solder. So I had to use pieces of wire to solder two traces together in one board and the other. Additionally, I made some minor mistakes in the board tracing and needed to add some components and connections to fix it. Whoops! But that's the first iteration of the boards, it's always like that. I'm really surprised I didn't make any crucial mistakes that would make PCBs unusable, because that's a common practice. Now to make all this device alive, MCU should be programmed. As I said, to program the microcontroller, I used an ISP interface with 6 pins. The problem was that the MK2 programmer I bought had a 2.5mm pitch, 
while I needed a smaller one. As you can see with the first prototype board that I assembled, I simply soldered wires to the programming pins. And that was it. However, soldering it every time to a new board wasn't very convenient and was in reality very uncomfortable. So I decided to make an adapter that would connect two headers. So I just soldered connectors together with wires and carefully poured all with epoxy. Look at how beautiful this thing is. Now with the adapter I can program the controller without any problems. Now the magic starts. And it is time to write program. I must say that writing the program for this device was the most boring part of the project for me. I spent several full days to write it and fix all the bugs. But eventually I was happy with the result and can show you what it can do. As I said before, the control of the board is done using one single button. If the button is pressed long enough, the device turns on and provides all its functions. Regimes can be changed by briefly pressing the button again. Pretty simple control scheme. When the device is turned off, it goes into a deep sleep mode with almost zero power consumption, ensuring that the battery does not discharge. At this stage I have created only three regimes for each design. Each sticker has its own unique colors. I wasn't sure which design would look the best. That's why I designed three different ones, two 3D printed cases and one CNC machine. I hoped that different designs would somehow produce varying light reflection patterns. And as you will see later, they did. For example, the beehive pattern creates a cool 3D-like image due to a light reflection. Even though the pentagon is hollow on one side, the light reflections from side walls create a 3D effect when viewed from the other side, so it looks like some pentagon pillars. Unfortunately, I do not have a sticker that matches this pattern, because I didn't know that it would look that cool. But in the future definitely this knowledge can be used to highlight specific parts of a sticker. Next is the one with straight cuts. It works similarly, giving the image a 3D appearance, but a different one. Also, when looking at it from the side, the sharp transitions can be seen, which could be used in some designs. But in this one, it just doesn't fit. The last and, in my opinion, the best option is the monolithic case. Why is it the best? Because it fits the sticker design the most. First of all, it doesn't distract from the main sticker print. Also, it creates even light distribution and produces a smooth color gradient. Also, it looks amazing from the other side, like some kind of a game stone. So, now when we have our champion, it is time to test different sticker designs with it and experiment with various light regimes. Here I have a variety of stickers, kindly designed by one artist specifically for this collaboration. You can find a link to her profile in the description. At the beginning I've applied only one layer of film and was quite happy with the result. But as you can see the contrast is a little bit poor, because the light passes through the film even where it shouldn't, for example at the black areas. The best solution to fix this was to add a second layer on the top of the first one, which worked quite well. The black areas no longer let the light through and the character itself is more visible now. During the video you also might have wondered why I haven't covered this oval polygon with a white soldering mask, like the whole board. The reason is that I'm planning to solder a piece of metal to it, which together with the magnets will serve as a magnetic fastener. And you might say that a better option would be to solder magnets to it, as in such case it could easily attach to any metal object. However, the problem is that magnets are not solderable. As soon as you heat a permanent magnet to a specific temperature, it loses its polarization and magnetic properties. So basically, only one option to attach magnets to the sticker was to glue them. For me, gluing them looked very unreliable, so I settled on the solution where the magnets remain separate from the sticker. As I said at the beginning, the initial idea was to create a wearable device, designed for concerts, maybe even raves, primarily for places with a dim light. And the concept of a magnetic fastener allows for easy attachment to clothing, without leaving any traces on it. And if you are worrying about its holding force, I can assure you that it's sufficient. The only way to separate magnets from the metal part is by sliding them apart. You might say that in a crowded place it's not a problem to slide it for a half centimeter and you would be right, this can happen easily. Because of that I'm looking for alternative solutions and so far looks like the most reliable is to use velcro fastening. But the problem is that it has to be somehow glued or sewn on a clothes. And basically that's what I was fighting with. I don't want to have a permanent patch on a clothes. So as well, not an ideal solution. 
Also, please remember that all this device is just a first iteration, and I will have to rethink some solutions that I have used. I have an idea on how to reduce its thickness by at least half and make it look even cooler, which I will show you in one of the next videos. To be honest, I've invested a lot of time in making this device and video, and I would really appreciate it if you could press the like button and leave a comment. This will help more people to discover this video and help grow this channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe to see new parts and more cool videos like that. Thanks for watching again, see you and goodbye!